by Foundations of Writing on the Academic Agency. To write clearly will help you to think clearly. The ability to communicate ideas in lucid prose is foundational to success in many areas, and it is a basic requirement in every walk of life. You will learn the parts of speech and come to understand the core functions of the English language, sentence construction and syntax, punctuation, style, and common mistakes. Once you see how mistakes are made, you will not unsee them. You will know for the rest of your life. Foundations of Writing. Buy it now. In recent times, I've been studying the rhetorical tactics of self-avowed centrists who are, in actual fact, liberals. Not leftists, which is to say socialists, but liberals. As the author of both Foundations of Logic and Foundations of Rhetoric, which you can buy right now on the academic agency, I have a special interest in how people avoid either making arguments or engaging with them. Many times what you find is emotionalism concealed by certain tactics that are designed to protect the interlocutor from actually confronting the point in front of them. Now, while everyone does this, people on the left, people on the right, and people in the centre, it seems most marked to me when you have people in the centre arguing or attempting to argue with someone from their right. This is partly because centrists will have spent most of their time dealing with arguments from the left, and so simply do not see where the rightists will be coming from. But it is also because the rightists will likely be hitting them with truths that produce cognitive dissonance in them, cause them to panic, cause them to reach, and so on, simply because they have no comebacks. So let us see what these rhetorical tricks are. So the first one is tactical ignorance, a.k.a. playing the hatchling. Now, I have to credit this one to Morgoth's review, but it is where the centrist acts like they know nothing at all, like they've literally just been hatched into the world and so ask questions and yet more questions about things that everybody knows. I came across this in the debate over gender roles. What's a traditional man? What's a traditional woman? As if everyone and their uncle and his dog doesn't know. The aim of this tactic is not uh, because... They want answers. It's not honest engagement. What they're trying to do is to wear you down or else find some minute point on which they can focus and then quibble. You have to call out this nonsense straight away rather than answering their questions. Deny it from the very off. Second tactic is tactical libertarianism. This galling tactic is when a centrist professes that the only real objection they have to something is the use of state force, as if they were a libertarian. This was a tactic employed by certain people recently when we debated the traditional gender roles. The line was, yes, we agree with traditional gender roles, we just object to the state enforcing it. And there is a surefire way to tell if someone is a genuine libertarian, and that is to bring up freedom of association, and in particular the forced desegregation of the 1960s when the Federal Army was used to march kids to school at gunpoint. If they support these things, as it turned out that these particular people I'm talking about did, then they do not actually care a jot if the state is used to enforce morality, if it is a moral they share. It's perfectly possible that the person will be a true libertarian, of course, but in that case, they wouldn't be a centrist. Libertarians tend to be consistent and logical, if nothing else. The third tactic is what I'd call tactical nihilism. This is when the centrist momentarily accepts the premise of your argument, but then says, more or less, that's fine, I'll just go down with the ship, I don't care anyway. In other words, they tactically go joker. I saw this happen frequently in the recent debates with people deciding they were going to just try to be as degenerate as possible, to revel in the squalor a little bit, despite claiming earlier that they would actually prefer it if there were better moral and social norms in society. Variations of this include claiming not to be serious. It's just a comedy show, bro, attacking you for being serious. Just get over yourself. Why are you so serious? Why do you care about this so much? Get over yourself. And similar, any argument where one side is professing not to be serious is not an argument. However, these people typically alternate uh, this tactical stance of not being serious with actually arguing. 
and so it is simply an irritation, a distraction. If someone you're arguing with does this to you, point out that it is a waste of time to argue with someone who isn't serious. Number four, tactical adoption of leftist moral framework. This is where the centrist suddenly becomes a full-blown social justice warrior and starts screaming racist or fascist at you like a shrieking bird, like a snivelling little worm. You should consider this a victory of sorts since it reveals them for who they really are. You should observe this and unsubscribe immediately from any nominally anti-SJW channel that does it. Leftists should have absolutely no place on your pull list in 2021, especially not leftists who pretend to be centrists. I consider these people vermin and absolute enemies, unworthy of engagement. You should never engage with leftists under any circumstances. There is no excuse to watch people after you've seen them engage in this behavior. They should, they're the lowest of the low. Fifth, tactical adoption of rightist moral framework. This is where the centrist tries their version of Alinsky tactics and tries to get you to live up to some right-wing principle or else point out where you failed to live up to it in the past. This was done constantly in the recent debate where people who had just moments earlier claimed not to care a jot about traditional masculinity and moments before that were actually asking the hatchling questions about, well, what is traditional masculinity? I just don't know. I've just been born. Moments after that, they then tried to hold me to some notion of traditional masculinity that they had in mind. These were desperate, flailing and sad tactics from intellectually outmatched people scrambling to save face. Don't fall for it. It would always be a mistake to try to prove yourself to whatever challenge is laid down by such people. A variation on this is tactical Christianity, where the interlocutor tries to appeal to some Christian sense of forgiveness or whatever else. Now, though I am not a Christian, people often mistake me for one and they try this on me. You should always call this out, especially if the person you're arguing with is from a notable rival group. Let's say a group notable for being enemies of Christians in history. Next, we have the incorrect attribution of fallacy cascade. This is where the person has some idea of some logical fallacies. Maybe they read it once, maybe they've heard other people say it, such as straw man, cherry picking, whatever else. And then they just assert that one of these has been done regardless of whether or not it has. This is probably done by somebody with double digit IQ or who has smoked too much weed perhaps. But the basic tactic is to keep throwing out the claim that some fallacy has been committed and hoping that the audience will be too stupid to realize that it has not. This was done to me recently uh, when I was accused of cherry picking. I rebutted the point in full only for the person who said it later to laugh it off because, you know, it's just a comedy show or something. Like I said, double digit IQ and probably too much weed. Seventh, arbitrary framing purity spiral. This is where the interlocutor tries to set some bar or standard of expectation of their opponent only then to move the goalpost at some later date to some new standard. Now I often try to head this off right at the very start of a discussion by asking the person to name their standard of proof. You know, before we even start talking about this, what information would actually convince you of my position? This way, you can actually see if they are in good faith. Most of the time, they will not be. In a recent discussion, my moronic opponents set arbitrary standards for discourse a few times. First claiming they wanted a good faith discussion. Then claiming that only live debates and not video responses will do. Then saying that they were too tired for a live debate when I actually said I'd come on. Then saying, actually, that they never wanted an exchange at all, but only sought to make fun. They did this in front of thousands of people, expecting them not to notice. Well, they did notice, or most of them did, all but the lowest IQ, or most blindly loyal supporters of theirs, called them out for it. So, my advice for this is, like I said, try to set the standard up front and agree to it early and preferably before you enter an exchange 
at all. It's not always possible, but if it is, you should you should try to do this right at the start. It saved me a lot of time uh, when I've been uh, d debating these sorts of people before. Um, often, when you when you insist on on naming the standard up front, they won't. They just won't do it. So there it is. You you saved yourself time and effort there. Number eight, denying or minimizing the scope of the problem. Now, another typical centrist tactic is to try to play down the extent of a problem that you are arguing about, trying to shrug it off, claim it isn't real, and so on. I've seen this countless times in every sort of debate. The easiest one to spot is on immigration, when they try to argue that immigration or demographic change isn't an issue. It's perfectly possible, though, through sheer force of facts, to get them to shift from this position in re real time, and I've seen that many times as well. But look out for it. You need to be prepared for it and have an arsenal of facts to hammer them over the head with. Literally hammer them until they basically have no option but to accept that there is a problem. Make sure that these facts are sourced to somewhere that is credible and will be credible in their eyes. And then keep going until they submit. Now, this is, uh, this is something I've talked about before. But sources, um, you need to stay away from like anything ideological, newspapers of any of any description. You need to try to get to the source of whatever newspaper, newspapers uh, quote. Memes won't do. Um, right wing websites won't do. Something something like the Daily Mail won't do. Um, best to take it directly from government sources. Um, you know, get them to a point where they literally can't, they cannot try to weasel out by saying, oh, well, the, the, I don't accept that source. And, uh, you, you know, <laughs> often I've actually seen them then, uh, that when they've got nowhere else to go, they actually then start to uh, question the, you know, question the validity of the data, in which case there's nothing you can do. Um, but that that's on there. Now, in my experience, you will almost always be able to do this with immigration and crime. Uh, immigration, uh, self-evident. Crime, self-evident. Um, stuff like the pandemic or the 2020 election, not so much. There are certain issues on which this will not be possible, to, to the hammering of facts, uh, either because it will result in a, po in a pointless stat-off I mean, literally every COVID discussion I've ever seen is just people posting graphs at each other. I, I, I have literally never seen an, a fruitful exchange on that on that topic, um, which is one of the reasons I never engage in it. Um, or uh, sometimes um, the regime will have ensured that there are simply no credi credible sources for the topic. Um, that'll be the 2020 election. I know there are a few articles here and there, but in my experience, they don't, they don't really sway anybody either. So um, there are certain topics that you won't be able to get anywhere with um, on that. Um, something like climate change, where the very data itself is, you know, is a, is an amalgamation of model it, of models and so on. There's just no point in in bringing those sorts of things up. Um, Anyway, in those cases, you'll be dealing with someone who is literally incapable of accepting something unless a source of officialdom tells them to believe it. So when you're dealing with that sort of person, um, and they do exist in, in large numbers, it is best to leave them to midwittery and to point out that they are a slave to power and a perfect minion of the current ruling class. There's, there's no hope for somebody who... Um, is at that level. I mean, you're basically dealing with a voucher at that point. Um, the best resource with which to destroy the self-looping accepted sources of midwittery uh, that I've come across is Ryan Falk's Leaving the Cathedral, which uh, I think he's giving away free. I picked up this PDF from one of his videos that I saw. Uh, but naturally, none of the midwits that you'll be dealing with are going to read that. You should read it and adjust your argumentation methods accordingly. At the very best, you can get them to see or to accept some of the things that Falk 
points out with the problems of the uh, you know the the endless self-looping sources of midwits. Nine, admitting the problem but pivoting to say that's a good thing. Now sometimes you can batter down the denial, you know the first level cope if you want, and get them to retreat to their second level cope, which is to accept what you're saying but then try to defend the problem that you're outlining. Uh, you'll, immigration's a classic case where it's like okay or um i don't know uh, certain crime uh conversation that you have they'd be like okay okay i accept that but uh actually it's a good thing and here's why and now here they will be on weak and unfamiliar ground and it's time for you to move in for the kill in fact in my experience this sort of moment here is where you'll start seeing some of the other tactics i've already mentioned in this video they don't really know what to do they'll flop all over the place uh, in a way that is embarrassing both to themselves to you and anybody watching in recent debates i saw two people in particular so thoroughly embarrass themselves that they should probably delete their accounts so that brings me to the final uh, tactic that i want to outline in this video which is a variant on the last one admitting the problem but pivoting to say the problem is you so this is where uh yes they accept the problem so you don't need to hammer them with any more facts or anything else but then they try to somehow claim that the problem is you for having the problem with the problem now, in the case of immigration, this is where they start calling you a racist or whatever. In the case of the recent debate on gender roles, this is where they started psychologizing and claiming I was insecure. Now, you must step through this tactic by pointing out what they are doing and insisting that they address the point. Here, what they're doing is attacking the man and not the argument. They need to attack the argument and not the man. Now, naturally, clowns will never address the point and will instead do things like trawl your social media for what they think are incriminating quotations, they'll call you names, they'll try to smear you with out-of-context quotations, Photoshop quotes, and so on. This is actually a victory. When people do this, they reveal who they really are. I think we've seen who some people really are recently. Don't support them, don't give them money, unsubscribe from them, tell them where to go. They have absolutely no place in a community such as this, and I'd hope that nobody watching this would ever waste their time on such people ever again. Frankly, disgraceful conduct. It goes without saying, if they try such classic SJW tactics on you, never apologise, never address their claims, never dignify their fake outrage. Step over them. We'll never be sorry. Now get out. Now available at the Academic Agency. Sharpen your analytical mind and your argumentation skills with Foundations of Logic. The course draws on the ancient wisdom of traditional logic that students learned for over 2,000 years, from the time of Aristotle through to the medieval schoolmen right down to the 20th century. Sign up now for a free preview lecture. Be sure to like this video and subscribe and if you really like my content, maybe consider joining the channel or donating or maybe even buy a mug. I am grateful for all of your support. Now get out.